Okay, I just wanted to share, um, have a little preempt on the motor rebuild on the um, trim line uh, there. But I was playing, uh, was playing with these amplifiers here that I had picked up. Uh, I bought two of them for just in case I would have an issue with one. And sure enough, there's an issue with one of them, brand new. Uh, sounded like it was blown or something. What I discovered with these brand new amplifiers was one of them, one channel was louder than the other. And the other one seemed to work fine. I would just, I subbed this one out with this one. This one with the problem had a couple things wrong with it. One channel of the stereo was softer than the other and these are just basically TDA 2030s ones for the sub and the left and the right channel and you got this little op amp here uh, I believe for the subwoofer so they can merge the two channels in any event I troubleshot this stereo being weak on one side and I traced it down to the um, this resistor right here As you can see I put in a regular well, it's hard to see there, the one next to the 104. A 560 ohm, hat, comparing it with the other amplifier over here, had a, it appears to be 5K ohm. 5K ohm, and this crazy, this crazy new numbering, uh, I mean, color system, I mean, I understand my color codes and all, but this says green, brown, black, brown, brown. I don't understand these five color, newfangled resistor coloring schemes but uh, more on that later so um, once I put the proper value in from 5k to 560 ohm I got both channels to be in balance yet I still had no bass coming on I have a subwoofer from a from a Sony CRT television like the one over there with no back on it that subwoofer was uh, taken from another one to uh, <clears throat> to get the uh, subwoofer, uh, to satisfy the subwoofer portion of this. So uh, to get the bass back, what I had to do was I traced it down to this this op amp right here. The op amp itself had sound coming in, and that's uh, the data sheet is available online. It's, a, it's an NE, it's an NE five five three two which is kind of like a 4558, I guess. It's supposed to have lower noise or something. Anyhow, I put a socket in there for that, and what I found um, in my, I went to my box of parts here, and I dug out a, I dug out this uh, CRT computer monitor board, which is riddled with all kinds of parts, and I took uh, that chip right there out. I know it's a little blurry, but the op amp in there, this has a few of them scattered for whatever reason, so without leaving the confines of the bench here, I was able to, uh, that's an LM358, uh, which is, they're pretty much the same thing after verifying online, so I put in the LM358 in place of this defective, and I have my bass back. So we have the left channel, right channel playing properly. And uh, brand new unit, two bad components. One mis uh, misplaced on the board, 5K in place of a 560 ohm. And then the uh, little op amp chip. That was defective. And they've got, as I'm powering it, let me just close with the power is coming from the, uh, another, another person with a lot of time on his hands gave me this, the subwoofer, uh, thing here, which is riddled with the same TDA chips. They have, uh, like six of them in there, I believe. One for the sub and one for the sub and, um, two, four, five. So there's six of them. And it basically uses the same, same op amp in there. But uh, more importantly, what I used from this was the uh, the transformer here to power the uh, the amplifier we're using now. So that's it for this portion. Now we can get back to the 
motor on the GE trim line.